Hello friends. In the previous session, we have just concluded our discussion on the non-linear analysis of the differential and cumulatively compound motor. So today, let us do something different, and we are going to start with DC motor starters. Now, for a DC motor, when you you don't uh, uh, let me say it's not a plug and play device, all right? So you don't buy a DC motor and you have a supply. You connect a switch and you just turn on the DC motor. If you do that, the motor will burn instantaneously. Instantaneously, the DC motor will burn at least high hp motors do usually you have a starter circuit or a starter mechanical starter or a starter circuit before the power sorry after the power supply and in between the actual motor right so basically what you have is that you are having your power supply okay this is your power supply okay and here you are having your starter or starter circuit starter or starter circuit all right and here is your motor actually so this is the motor. So this thing is there in between. So we are going to see what is that thing and why it is actually required. So for that you have to see what is the problem faced during the starting condition. All right, starting condition by what I mean at omega equal to zero. All right, now you know that as per the circuit of a DC motor, let us take a does not specifically tell it is a shunt or a DC uh, series motor or anything like that. Let's just take a DC motor now. Okay, so. This is your VT, all right, and this is your IA. Hmm? So IA is equal to VT minus EB divided by EA divided by RA. Sometimes it's also called EB to just show that it's back EMF. But I like to call it as EA, which is the EMF developed in the armature. Now EA is a function of speed, all right. That means at starting, at omega equal to zero, EA would be equal to zero, all right. That means IA will be equal to VT divided by RA and this value is quite a high value and the windings are not designed to handle such amount of current because the insulations would fail, the winding would just heat up and burn off. So what can we do? Before that, let us take a simple example to show the gravity of the situation now. So the 50 HP motor, 250 volt motor and let me see what is the armature is this, 0.06 ohms. All right, and it is a full load current rating is around full load current rating is 200 amperes. So anything about 200 amperes would damage the motor. All right, uh, a little bit is okay, 210, that is okay, but even that prolonged use will damage the motor. We are talking about very high currents here. So full load current rating is 200 amperes. So at the time of starting, at starting, let us see what is the current. So let this is the IA starting. So IA at starting is equal to VT by RA. So that is 250 volt by 0 0.06 ohms, which is around 4167 amperes. This is about 20 times than the normal current. This 4167 amperes is about 20 times more than the rated current, more than the rated current, A huge value. And this type of current, even if it flows momentarily through the motor, it will just burn the motor instantaneously. Even a momentary current of 4167 amperes will destroy the motor completely. So what is the solution now? What can be the solution? A simple solution is adding a resistance, right? Best thing is add a resistance. Add a resistance in series with RA. Okay. We saw in speed control, this RA control actually we saw in the speed control. So what do you do? You have your motor, okay, and this is your RA. What I am telling is that you put a resistance, all right, R, let me call it as R start, okay, and this is VT, and you put the resistance in such a way that the current is manageable. Now, there is an inherent disadvantage here because if you put a resistance in series, I have told you the torque speed characteristic which was earlier like this would become like this. That means the entire torque slip characteristic would uh, be bad. It would go bad because this is a good characteristic and this is not a good characteristic because the as the load increases, the speed sharply decreases here now. All right, and that is not what you want. You want fine control. So, but you cannot avoid this situation as well. You don't want your windings to burn because. If for this particular condition, if you burn your windings, you don't have your motor itself. 
So a good solution is adding a resistance in series with RA. Of course, you have to add it momentarily, uh, not momentarily, till EA develops. EA develops to reduce the IA to a normal value. To a normal value. That means this resistance should be only used during the starting till the EA, be, EA gets developed because as EA increases, you know that, sorry, as EA increases, IA would come down because this 4167 would come down. All right. So till that happens, you give the series resistance and after that you remove the series resistance. Okay. So that is the concept, adding a resistance in series with RA till EA develops. So this till is important. All right. So what are the available methods? So there are two methods here actually. Okay. Uh, the two methods are one is an old method and one is conventionally new method. So let us draw both of them together. Uh, not together of course. So let me first show you the new method. All right. So this is 0.05 ohm say this is EA. <coughs> all right. And you will have a series of resistances. All right. Like this. So this entire thing is going to be your starting resistance and this is your uh, shunt winding if the motor is a shunt motor okay and this is going to be vt so what is the difference here is that each resistance will have a contact here let me call it as 1s let me call it as 2s and let me call it as 3s here okay now the important thing here is that this is a normally open contact all right so this is a new term this is a normally open contact all right now, if a this might be part of a relay logic circuit, for time being, understand, if that relay is energized, this contact would close, okay? So, what happens is that this contact would become like this, okay? So, the path would conduct. So, when should that happen? That is the trick here. So, what happens is that, let me just draw it. So, what happens is that, you start the motor, so this is your starting resistance. You start the motor and all these three contacts are open. Okay, so there is no current flowing through. So the current will have to flow through these three resistances. All right, three resistances and it will reduce to a nominal value. Now, as EA increases, as EA increases, each of these resistance will remo get removed. How it is going to get removed? When 1S gets activated of a particular time interval, after EA develops a little bit, this 1S will get removed. Okay, so what will happen if 1S get removed? Sorry, not 1S get removed. This 1S will close. Not removed. The 1S would close. It would become a short circuit. So what would happen is that the current would start like this. Okay, look at here. The current would start like this. This is open. So it can't go here. This is open. It can't go here. So it goes like this. And here, this resistance is short circuited. So it would come here. And it would come here. That means you have removed this resistance. After some time, this 2S would get removed. Not removed, of course, I am again using the word removed. This 2S would get short circuited. Okay, so this resistance would get short circuited here. So this, so at this particular time, what would happen? The current would go like this. Now this is an open circuit. So the current travels through the resistance. Now here, it has an easier path. It goes like this, goes like this and through the resistance. And finally, when EA has developed considerably and the normal current is passing, the third switch closes. So the third switch closes. So finally, the third switch would close. And at this particular condition, the current would go here to go like this, go like this and go like this. All right. That means all the starting resistances are bypassed. All right. So initially you are introducing these resistances and as time goes each of the switch closes and the uh, normal current is going to path uh, going to flow now the primitive techniques not the primitive of course the old technique it's bad to use primitive word okay because still in uh, colleges in laboratories you will find this particular method right in college laboratories dc starting is done by this particular method all right i feel that in colleges also they should start uh, they should have both these things they should have this solid this uh, relay logic based as well as the other one also so let us see what is the difference here let me just draw it quickly i'll just use uh, four one four yeah. 
this is my shunt so rf lf and this is the starting resistance all right now what does this mean here in the old technique you would have actually a lever which you can control so this is a lever which you can control now in this is the off position so you see that the current the current if it is look at this pointer here on this area look at this the current in the off position the current is coming here and this is an open circuit so here it there is no contact here it's an open circuit all right so initially there is no current so if you want to start the motor you first take this in this position here okay so how many resistances the current is seeing one two three four resistances are there and the current would glow flow here that means the current would get reduced in the starting condition now as the motor is building up speed and by which ea is increasing you have to reduce the number of resistance so you move it to this particular point the second point here so one two three four all right four point so you move to the second point like this so when the second point is activated what happens the current sees how many resistances like this one two three and then it can come here because this is the easier path it does not have to go here because this is an open circuit as time goes again as the motor develops further speed you still move the handle here and you see only two resistance and finally you see only one resistance and then once uh, the motor has developed considerable amounts of speed the final position would be this one so this would be the final position and the current can easily flow through like this okay the current can easily flow like this and this is how the old starter work now the old starting method has a particular disadvantage here let us see what is the disadvantage so basically this is done by some person right it is done by this moving is done by some person so it is basically human dependent so either it he can move the lever faster okay or he can move it slower he can move it slow so he can move it fast let us correct the grammar here so he can either move it fast or he can move it slow so let's see what happens when he moves it fast now when he moves it fast he is cutting all the resistances very quickly at that time the current might the eb might not the ea might not have built up enough to reduce the current on its own all right so if you cut the resistance quickly what would happen huh? the motor would get damaged because sufficient ea has not developed all right so if the handle is moved quickly excessive armature current excessive armature current would flow and damage the motor i hope it's clear see basically moving the lever is cutting each resistance all right so if you do it quickly the resistance would be cut at a point when the current is still high that means eb has not developed enough all right now, either next thing is that he can do it slow okay he can move it slow okay in this case what happens these resistances see this armature current for a longer period of time and you know that heat is what heat loss is equal to i square rt so this high value of current for a larger amount of time leads to high heat loss and the resistance wattages might not be able to might not be rated for this the wattage of the resistance might not be rated to handle this much amount of heat so what if what would happen if uh, he moves it slow the resistances are seeing the current for a much longer time the starting resistances and what would happen the starting resistances would burn off starting resistance will burn off due to the high current seen by those uh, resistances all right uh, so this is about starters in the next particular session we will be doing dc motor efficiency calculations all right how to calculate efficiency properly for a dc motor all right so if you have liked this particular video please like share and subscribe my channel there is an engineering circuit analysis or playlist also in the same channel and also don't forget to check down the notes uh, i don't know whether i will put it for this particular session uh, when at the time of uploading of course you will find it later for all the other uh, at least for six or seven lectures i have put the notes also as summary all right so i'll see you in the next lecture thank you